Every year, the DC Bar honors those organizations and individuals who have gone above and beyond to advance the legal profession and enhance access to justice. Our annual awards recognize the best of the best, shining a well-deserved spotlight on the exemplary work of our members and the DC legal community. Join us in celebrating the winners of the 2021 DC Bar Annual Awards. The Frederick B. Abramson Award. The Frederick B. Abramson Award recognizes a DC Bar committee or project that, through innovation, initiative, or unusual dedication, has resulted in a significant benefit to the DC Bar and its individual members. The award is named for Frederick B. Abramson, a DC legal legend who served as bar president from 1985 to 1986. For years, Fred was a well-known mentor and role model to many attorneys and future judges, especially in the African-American community, where he inspired countless others to follow in his footsteps. The 2021 winner of the Frederick B. Abramson Award is the DC Bar Information Technology Team for the new and improved DC Bar website and e-commerce catalog. The DC Bar IT team's effort to improve the Bar's digital presence became particularly critical during the pandemic, when the digital delivery of information and services became a necessary part of Bar operations. The refreshed website and e-commerce catalog provide members with resources, tools, classes, and more, all in an easy-to-use, accessible, and secure platform. Congratulations to the DC Bar IT team. I am so grateful to be part of this um, dedicated team who does not hold back on anything that they, they've set their mind um, into. So everybody's hardworking, dedicated people to accomplish um, what they, they set their mind into. And I think at, at the end, um, the results showed what everybody did. This project had two phases. The first one is the content part of the website where people come in and um, get just content. And second uh, portion, the second phase is the e-commerce where we sell our events and courses. We want to thank everybody, the IT division, and then the, uh, the cross-functional uh, teams that were involved from the beginning to the end. And thank you all. Without you, we wouldn't be able to get this award. Uh, I want to thank first to start with our uh, the our leader, the CIO. Uh, she's a great leader for managing all the project, and uh, to get and then each team as well. I am grateful to be able to have a leader um, that supports um, me for um, accomplishing everything that I am doing, as well as being able to support by a wonderful team. Um, that, that I'm blessed to work with day in and day out. The Voluntary Bar Association of the Year Award recognizes the DC chapter of a voluntary bar association that provides exemplary service to its members, the legal profession, or the DC community through outstanding programming, community outreach, special initiatives, or professional activities. The 2021 Voluntary Bar Association of the Year is the Washington Council of Lawyers. Now celebrating its 50th anniversary, the Washington Council of Lawyers trains, advocates for, mentors, and builds community to promote pro bono service and the practice of public interest law within the district. In 2020, the organization hosted more than 70 events and trainings, attracting more than 4,000 attendees. Through its racial justice series and other programs, the Washington Council of Lawyers worked to inform the legal community on the impact of racial bias and racism in the legal system, and to address the disparate impact of evictions and other civil legal actions on people of color. The organization also advocated for the continued funding of civil legal services, the protection of pro bono litigants' rights, and for increased opportunities for D.C. government lawyers to engage in pro bono representation. Congratulations to the Washington Council of Lawyers on this award and an incredible year of work. We were really excited to learn that we were being recognized as the Voluntary Bar Association of the Year this year. 
For 50 years, Washington Council of Lawyers has been the public interest voice in the legal community. We're used to giving out awards to pro bono advocates and public interest lawyers. And so tonight is really special when we get recognized instead. Our mission is to ensure our courts treat everyone fairly, regardless of money, position, or power. Our strength is in bringing together the entire legal profession to advocate, educate, mentor, and build a strong public interest community. Tonight, we celebrate. Tomorrow, we get back to work. And we hope you will join us in working to advance access to justice in the District of Columbia. Thank you so much for this award. We're very proud, Nancy and I, and Christina and Jean Marie, uh, the other members of our staff, very proud of the offerings that we have been able to put forward during the pandemic time period. We've put on over 70 events in the last 12 months, attracting over 4,000 attendees uh, we want to build on our success. Uh, we want to build on the recognition that the DC Bar has so graciously given us. Uh, and we're very, very excited, uh, looking forward into the future to build a bigger and better Washington Council of Lawyers uh, to ensure that everyone in our city uh, gets a fair shake in the legal system. We are very excited about the future. We will continue to grow. We will continue to offer our programs and our advocacy and our initiative and our services and our mentoring. Uh, and we look forward to welcoming you uh, at a future event. So thank you, thank you to the DC Bar very much for bestowing this award uh, on us. We are humbled by it and we will double down and make sure that we uh, live up to uh, the honor that is being bestowed upon us. Thank you. The Community of the Year Award honors the DC Bar community that best exemplifies professional service to its members and to the citizens of DC through educational programs, professional activities, involvement in current issues and legislation, and member communications. The 2021 Community of the Year is the Corporation Finance and Securities Law Community. This community met the moment in 2020, bringing together members, government agencies, industry experts, and others to address important and timely issues, such as diversity and inclusion in business and finance, environmental, social, and governance investing, and corporate disclosure, and data privacy and security. Seeing demand among its members, the community established a Diversity and Inclusion in Business and Finance subcommittee and three task forces addressing key legal issues relevant to the community. Congratulations to the Corporate Finance and Securities Law Community and its members. Thank you very much for the award. Uh, we're extremely honored and humbled. Um, this really is a wonderful recognition of work that has been done by us, um, by subcommittee chairs um, and the vice chairs of the subcommittees and the members of the subcommittees. Layla Baum um, is our fearless leader. Layla has been involved in this community for, uh, I believe, several years now. Layla is at the SEC, which brings a tremendously important angle to this work because she can um, spearhead and see how the work is being done uh, from a regulatory perspective. I'm a partner at a law firm, Reed Smith, so I bring in the um, contribution from the private industry. And combining these two perspectives, we believe provides a very significant um, benefit to our members. I'm so proud that this year we were able to not only put on our traditional programs, but also tackle some difficult issues with new programming. It's great that we had record attendance and it was wonderful to see more engagement from our colleagues in the community. Throughout the year, we organized programs on developments in corporate and finance law and regulations. And this year we did that, but we also wanted to take on some initiatives on certain topics, one of which was diversity. In January of 2020, we had established a new subcommittee on diversity and inclusion in business and finance. We felt so strongly that given the skills we have as attorneys and the experiences and networks we have amongst ourselves here at the DC Bar, 
We really had to do something to address this challenge that has been facing our profession and our industry for such a long time. As we all know, in 2020, these issues really came to the forefront in ways we couldn't have imagined. So we revamped our programming to address those emergent topics. We've also been working very hard to ensure our programs address different groups of people who are interested in these topics and also affected by these issues. We have so much work still to do, but I'm confident that we have a great platform from which we can move forward. The award for Pro Bono Law Firm of the Year recognizes a law firm for excellence, achievement, and commitment to providing legal services to the district's low-income or disadvantaged individuals or organizations serving such individuals. The 2021 Pro Bono Law Firm of the Year is Covington & Burling, LLP. Throughout the course of the year in 2020, Covington & Burling's DC office contributed more than 119,000 hours, more than 9% of its billable hours, to pro bono service. Covington lawyers represented low-income DC residents and their families in high-stakes matters involving shelter, safety, health, public benefits, and wages. Providing outside counsel for more than 500 nonprofit organizations and small businesses, Covington lawyers advised on a wide variety of issues and offered critical information and resources, helping them continue to serve the community during these challenging times. Congratulations to the team at Covington and Burling on an extraordinary year of service. Alan Pemberton, I'm the co-chair of our pro bono program at Covington. And at Covington, we're very excited to be recognized by the DC Bar for all the work of so many of our lawyers. Uh, we've had for over 50 years a rotation program where we send lawyers, detail them full time for six month shifts. People just, you know, find their voices as lawyers sometimes doing pro bono work. I mean, they find they have a flair for standing up in court and sticking up for the little guy. I chose Covington in part because of its commitment to pro bono. For 50 years, the firm has had a pro bono rotation program, and I'm proud that I got to participate in it. And I'm not sure of any other law firm in DC that does the same thing. I am incredibly happy the firm has won this honor. Covington attorneys represented low-income DC residents in high-stakes matters all over the district. These are cases helping tenants stay in their homes, removing barriers to employment, and helping clients to keep their wages and public benefits. The Laura N. Rinaldi Pro Bono Lawyer of the Year Award recognizes a lawyer who sets a standard of excellence and achievement in providing legal services to the district's low income or otherwise disadvantaged individuals or the organizations that serve them. The award is named in memory of Laura Rinaldi, a treasured member of the Pro Bono Center staff, who also championed the special education rights of the district's youth. Laura was a dedicated, talented attorney who dramatically improved the lives of DC residents living in poverty. Laura's memory continues to inspire the entire legal services community. The 2021 Laura N. Rinaldi Pro Bono Lawyer of the Year Award goes to Dan Cantor, a partner at Arnold & Porter. Dan is recognized both for his longtime commitment to pro bono work and recent remarkable efforts relating to pandemic relief. Dan assembled a team of more than 100 lawyers across eight offices who provided counseling on unemployment benefits, claims denial appeals, and the defense of allegations of overpayment. The group has provided assistance to more than 800 individuals. Dan also led efforts to support small businesses by providing information and resources about loans, programs, and other benefits needed to weather the economic disruptions of the pandemic. 
All in all, Dan devoted 852 hours to pro bono service in 2020, and 839 of those hours were spent serving low-income DC residents or the organizations that serve them. Congratulations to Dan on this award, and thank you for your leadership and service to the community. Dan Cantor is the energizer bunny of pro bono attorneys, putting everything he has into his work. When clients first come to LCE, they are disillusioned by a world that seems to have turned its back on them. But Dan reaches past that and connects with each person. He gives them hope, reassurance, and respect. LCE is a better organization thanks to Dan's leadership on our board, and the world is a better place because of the work he does. Thank you, Dan, and congratulations. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the DC Bar for this kind, important recognition. It's a deep honor to be mentioned and considered in the same breath as someone of Laura's caliber. But of course, this recognition isn't about me as an individual or about any individual in particular. Rather, it speaks to an enormous collaborative effort among thousands of lawyers and other individuals in the DC area, nationally and internationally. And also to ensure that every single participant in our legal system has their voices heard. This is an ongoing effort, and there's a lot of work that remains to be done. But I'm grateful to be a small part in that, and I'm grateful to be part of a bar organization that takes this obligation so seriously. So once again, thank you for this very kind recognition, and I look forward to continuing to work with everyone as we work to achieve the reality of equal justice for everyone. Thank you. Now, two DC Bar Awards of special distinction. The Beatrice B. Rosenberg Award recognizes a DC Bar member whose career contributions to the government exemplify the highest order of public service. The award was established by the Bar in honor of late DC Bar member Beatrice B. Rosenberg, who dedicated 35 years of her career to government service and performed with distinction at the U.S. Department of Justice and the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. For the first time in Bar history, the Bar has chosen two recipients for the 2021 Beatrice Rosenberg Award. They are Mary Catherine Mallon of the U.S. Department of State's Office of the Legal Advisor, and, posthumously, George Valentine of the D.C. Mayor's Office of Legal Counsel. Mary Catherine Mallon, now Deputy Legal Advisor at the U.S. Department of State, has spent more than 35 years in public service as an international lawyer, handling issues involving diplomatic and consular immunity, foreign sovereign immunity, foreign official immunity, privileges and immunities of international organizations, and the recognition of states and governments. Throughout her career, Ms. Mallon has been a pioneering force in international law, leading the offices of consular affairs and the office of the legal advisor, working on several notable Supreme Court cases, and mentoring new lawyers through her work with the American Society of International Law and as a professor at Georgetown University Law Center. Because of her outstanding record of government service and exceptional contributions to the international law and DC legal community, the DC Bar is proud to honor Mary Catherine Mallon with the 2021 Beatrice Rosenberg Award for Excellence in Government Service. Congratulations. I am deeply honored to have been selected for the B. Rosenberg Award together with George Valentine. So many of my colleagues richly deserve to be recognized. It's hard to believe that I'm joining the ranks of the amazing former acting legal advisor, Mary McLeod, and DOJ superstar and counsel to Nancy Pelosi, Doug Letter. I'm grateful to the DC Bar for bestowing this award year after year to recognize those who have devoted their careers to public service. The award affirms the legal community's support for the essential work of public servants, and I thank the DC Bar for doing so. I want to thank my colleagues in the Legal Advisor's Office, whose passion, good humor, collegiality make it, as we say, the L family. Thanks especially to those who secretly nominated me for this award. I have to also thank my primary mentor, Linda Jacobson, 
as well as my longtime colleagues and friends, Judy, Kathleen, Holly, and Paige, who shared my joys and successes and supported me in more difficult times. Finally, I thank my family, who suffered through middle of the night calls, late pickups after school, and interrupted vacation, all occasioned by some work emergency. B. Rosenberg set an inspiring example with her efforts to promote and protect civil rights, her selfless dedication to the rule of law, and as a woman in a leadership position. For myself, I'll strive to follow in the footsteps of George Valentine, mentoring newer lawyers, providing support and encouragement to those around me, and serving our country with integrity and dedication. Thank you again for honoring me with this award. The second recipient of the 2021 Beatrice Rosenberg Award for Excellence in Government Service goes to the late George Valentine of the DC Mayor's Office of Legal Counsel. George Valentine dedicated more than 30 years of his career to serving the public, including 16 years as Deputy Attorney General in the Office of the Attorney General for the District of Columbia, and most recently as the Deputy Director of the Mayor's Office of Legal Counsel. In March of 2020, Mr. Valentine passed away due to COVID-19. He was only 66. Mayor Muriel Bowser said then in a tweet, quote, George Valentine epitomized what it is to be a dedicated public servant, and he always shared his deep knowledge of law and his boundless love of DC. His work and leadership left a lasting mark on the district and our legal community. For that, the DC Bar is proud to posthumously honor Valentine with the 2021 Beatrice Rosenberg Award for Excellence in Government Service. Here to accept the award on his behalf is Samuel C. Kaplan, a partner at Boys Schiller Flexner LLP. I accept this award on behalf of George Valentine, and I thank the Bar for its choice to honor George and his 36-year career of dedicated public service on behalf of the District of Columbia. We would have been deeply touched to receive it. And we all wish that he would have had the opportunity today or years from now to accept this award on his own behalf. The list of distinguished recipients of the Rosenberg Award reminds us of the importance of having attorneys to serve in those roles who embody the highest standards of ability, integrity, and professionalism. The District of Columbia was long fortunate to have such a champion in George. He served the district through critical and complicated periods in its history. The period that he supervised district civil litigation alone spanned six mayors, six corporation councils, and four attorneys general. George also leaves a lasting legacy through the many attorneys and supervisors who had the opportunity to work with and learn from him. George also was unselfish with his time and support, even with attorneys who do not work for him, including various attorneys who commented at the time of his passing about how helpful George was to them as young attorneys and taking time to meet with and mentor them. So while I am here today, first and foremost on George's behalf and accepting this award, it also is my honor to stand here in the stead of all those who held my position as George's assistant deputy together with the countless attorneys who had the opportunity to work for and learn from him over the years. Our system and the public depend upon having attorneys of integrity and ability can be counted on to ensure that the public's interests are protected and to ensure that those whom the public elects to make decisions on their behalf receive the best legal advice. George Valentine embodied those qualities and was the quintessential public servant. We will miss him deeply and so will the district that he loved and served for so long and left too soon. I again thank the bar on George's behalf for the honor of this award and for the honor of delivering these remarks on his behalf. Our final award of the evening is presented biennially, alternating with the Thurgood Marshall Award. 
Established in 1993, the prestigious William J. Brennan Award recognizes a DC Bar member who has shown extraordinary commitment and initiative in pursuing equal justice and opportunity for all Americans. The DC Bar is proud to present the 2021 William J. Brennan Award to David Reiser of Zuckerman Spader for his decades of service, advocating for access to justice for the poor and powerless. Mr. Reiser spent more than a decade at the Public Defender Service for the District of Columbia as a staff attorney, supervisor, special counsel, and ultimately general counsel. He served as special assistant to the general counsel of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development during the Clinton administration. As counsel at Zuckerman Spader, he has committed thousands of hours to pro bono service, including significant contributions to the establishment, development, and expansion of the Legal Aid Society of the District of Columbia's Barbara McDowell Appellate Advocacy Project. Congratulations to David Reiser, the winner of the 2021 William J. Brennan Award, and thank you for your relentless pursuit of equal justice and opportunity. I got my start doing prison cases as a law student, and I just found out that a lawyer I used to drive out to FCI Danbury with more than 40 years ago is retiring, so I'm hoping this award is not a way of telling me to retire, because there is so much more work still to be done. The list of those I need to thank for making possible the work the Bar is recognizing today is too long to even attempt to cover everybody individually. It extends from my teachers and friends in the Yale Legal Services Program, to my colleagues and students in the Georgetown Prettyman Program, to my colleagues and mentors who fought the high-speed death penalty machine in the 1980s, to my colleagues at PDS, HUD, and Zuckerman Spader, and the lawyers at the DC Legal Aid Society who I hope think of me as a colleague to my clients, and to my family. I will save more personal thanks for more personal settings. But I have a no thanks message too. Today I wanna to use this opportunity to tell you why you should honor a person who cannot be here because of her untimely death. The person I wanna acknowledge is Barbara McDowell, who was the first director of the Legal Aid Appellate Project, and who I had the privilege to work with for several years after she left the Solicitor General's office. Barbara introduced me when Legal Aid gave me an award back then, and it is only fair for me at the very least to share this moment with her. To join forces with Barbara was to believe that it was always possible to change minds with just a little more effort and hard thinking, to bend the curve toward justice in real time. The people whose work I want to acknowledge are the lawyers and staff of PDS, Legal Aid, and the many governmental and nonprofit organizations that face the daily task of representing poor people in cases that get little attention. They are some of the best lawyers I know. There is a tendency to think that pro bono work should receive special praise. And yes, I think the bar should do everything in its power to encourage it. But we are just visitors. I know the work isn't all fun. It is tiring and sometimes feels thankless, even futile but our best and most lasting response as a profession to systemic injustice is a system that strives to provide justice for all. One of the rewards of faithfully serving people who are being pushed around is that each push back generates new energy for the next time. Thank you for allowing me to share in the fun and thank you to Zuckerman Spader for allowing me to be a small part of the effort 